Hey everybody, in this episode I'm going to go over the Rope Runner Pro. I made a previous video, but it's not going to be as comprehensive as this video. So, here we have the device. This device is what is known as a multi-sender. That is because you can ascend and descend using the same device. It was designed and invented by Kevin Bingham, and it is sold by Notch Equipment. Let's go over the main components of the device. So we have up here, this top part is what is between here and here, it's known as the bird. This is where you depress to descend using the device. Um, up here we have a slick pin. This is gonna be a stainless steel slick pin. And we have right here, we have a bollard. So the rope gets kind of squeezed between the slick pin up here and the bollard and it almost is like a rope wrench in a sense. Next we're going to have a number of swing plates and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, here we have one two aluminum slick pins, another second bollard right here, and then we have a slack tending pulley and another side plate. Next we have the connection point for the climber and for a carabiner, and then right here you can see this little connection point here, that is for a chest ascender. All of this hardware is replaceable, by the way, and sold by the manufacturer. When you first receive your device, it'll be important to learn how to properly orient it. You can see right here that this is showing up, so you automatically know that it's oriented this way. Now, next it's going to be important to understand how to orient this top portion here and how to set it up. So if it's all straight like this, you're going to have it, it's going to look like this. Okay? Now, in order to put this on, you're going to have to start somewhere. I recommend that you start at the top and I'll show you why. What you're going to do is you're going to open this top slick pin and there are going to be these little buttons that you press to open it up. It's very intuitive. You'll figure it out. And once you've opened it up, you insert the rope and then close the slick pin. Now this is the reason I said to start at the top. The device will now hold itself up while you finish putting it on. So the next part is to open this second slick pin right here. So I'm going to do that. That's going to drop in. And now I'm going to open this side plate. Okay. And if you're having trouble figuring out where the rope goes, you'll see both up here and down here an, an engravement of a rope showing that that's where it'll go. So. I have the rope now, and I'm going to stick it in, and then close the side plate, and then insert, reinsert the slick pin. At this point, you're almost done. You just have to open this slick pin down here, where the pulley is, and sometimes this one has a little bit of difficulty dropping in and if you have trouble with that on the back take this and slowly rotate it until it drops in so you're gonna see I'm gonna rotate it and then it dropped in and then open this side plate 
and then insert the rope and then reinsert the slick pin. Now the device is on. The way this device works is when you ascend, if you're using a chest ascender, it will pull up on it, the device will collapse and raise up and then when you reapply your weight, it will grab and stretch out. As far as multi-centers go, this is one of the longer devices, which is why I recommend using a smaller carabiner like a um, DMM Perfecto. And this will help shorten the length between your bridge and the top of the device. This device also has a slack tending pulley. And the way this works is when you're up in the canopy and you have this attached to your harness, when, you need, when you're moving around and you need to get rid of slack, you just very simple, super easy. It's one of the smoothest tending devices I've ever used in my life, if not the smoothest tending. When buying the Rope Runner Pro, it is important to buy a rope that is going to be compatible with the device. You cannot just buy any rope and expect it to work well. I'm gonna list out all of the ropes that the manufacturer recommends that you can use for this device. Sterling HTP, 11 millimeter and 13 millimeter. Yale Kern Master, 11 millimeter and 13 millimeter. Notch Equipment Dragon, 11 millimeter. Teufelberger Tachyon, 11.5 millimeter. Teufelberger High V, 13 millimeter. Teufelberger Dragonfly, 11.1 millimeter. Samson Ivy, 11.7 millimeter. Samson Vortex, 12.7 millimeter, and the Notch Equipment Banshee, 11.7 millimeter. Now, I do know from personal experience that another rope that worked well for me was the Teufelberger Adrenaline. Next, when you buy this, it will require calibration. It's not just going to work with your rope. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to need to, it'll come with a Allen wrench and you use that to open up both sides of this adjustable bollard at the top here. It has along it markers to help you identify where you placed it. Numbers between one through five, I believe. Yes. And when you loosen it up, it will allow you to move it along this column that has been cut out here. And the closer you bring it towards the top, the tighter it's going to squeeze the rope between this stainless steel slick pin and this bollard. It's going to take some trial and error to get your rope to work with the device. It took me roughly four days of trying one hour every day in order to finally find a setting that will work. And once I found it, I made sure I locked in that baller tightly, but not too tightly. Um, you don't want to damage the pieces in between that keep it from sliding, because I believe those are made out of some sort of synthetic. If you're having trouble getting your rope to work. What you can do is, one thing that worked for me was I had bought my Adrenaline, my new, as a new rope to work with this device because I had heard that it worked well with the device. And I could not for the life of me get it to dial in and function properly or the way I wanted it to. And so someone recommended to me that I wash my rope 
and take off that coating that the manufacturer puts on new ropes. And as soon as I did that, man, it made a huge difference. It really, it immediately started working better. And now I don't want to even touch this setting because it works so perfectly. And because of that, because you'll find you're in the same position where you, once you find it, you don't want to touch it. Um, that means you're pretty much stuck using it with one rope that you've calibrated it with. And that can be good or neutral, it's, or bad, I guess, it can be really bad. But depending on, most people only really use one rope at a time for the most part. Um, but a lot of people do have different length ropes for different length jobs. And if you need to switch between two different ropes, um, make sure that you have chosen ropes that are in similar diameter and similar type. You know, if it's a, if your original rope is super static, then get other super static ropes or get the same type of rope. That would work even better. Another thing that you can do to get this device to work better is ascend up into the canopy several times and just kind of bomb out multiple times to wear down this ball or these ballers, plural. And that will help the device operate a little better. The longer I've used this device, it's worked increasingly better. So it definitely is true that wearing down the baller and the slick pin does help. Another thing that you could do to get your rope to function better with the device if it's a newer rope is you can find a natural crotch and just kind of pull the entire length of the rope through the natural crotch several times to both remove the coating on the top and also to just wear down the fibers, get them to become a little more malleable. and. You're gonna find that when you use this device that it flattens out your rope. Because of the design, it causes your rope to flatten down. And so it's ideal to have ropes that have strong body. You know, the body holds together really well and doesn't kind of mush down very easily. So that way it holds its round shape as much as possible. It's not going to win over the ball or it's not gonna stay round, but just by having a rope that does stay around more easily, it will make the device function better. Another thing that's good to know is when you're using this device, you're going to want to make sure that you do not side load it. And what side loading is, is if you're going over, you know, a, if you're going over a limb you don't want to be putting forces like that on the device because it can easily break in this way um, it's not designed to be having any forces applied to it in this way so please try to avoid that another thing when using a chest ascender with the device you are going to be using an accessory carabiner um, and so what you'll do is you'll connect the accessory carabiner and you know what using your chest ascender it'll raise up the device and there you have it but make sure at the top of your ascent you remove this little accessory carabiner every single time and the reason for that is because as you're going up it can get stuck over the top here and that can hold the bird down and then this is just going to drop. In addition to that, you never want to use any sort of device, especially one with a foot loop, like a hand ascender with a foot loop, above your device. I actually tried this out at one point to see what would happen and what happens is the foot loop ends up getting pressed against this really, really hard. And it makes it very difficult to use the device at all. Um, it can also 
accidentally potentially collapse the device causing the climber to fall to the ground. Another thing, if you're doing redirects and you are going over a limb, make sure that you are very careful in feeding all of this tail down first and over before you descend with the device. And I'll show you why. That's because if you were to just go down, it's going to cause this device to collapse. And then it could, it might not always, but it could, you know, cause something like that to happen. Especially if it's really tight, you know, there's nothing, there's no opportunity for the device to really grab on. But, so you just want to make sure that you avoid this because that will potentially cause problems. So always feed this slack down through before you descend. One thing that you can do to help make the device more comfortable to use, if you are right-handed, this device comes with the slick pin coming out the side up here, coming out the side. And this means if you are right-handed and you try to use this, it'll be digging into your palm. So you can see, all you, can, all you have to do is you just take this slick pin and switch directions and put it on the opposite side. So that's a little pro tip. This device has the date of manufacture on one side and the serial number. Um, and it has other important information like the compatible rope sizes, which is 11 to 13 millimeter ropes. Um, it also shows that it's for one person only. Go figure. This device comes with a lifetime warranty against manufacturer defect and any other sort of catastrophic event that might happen with your device. Finally, if you wish to clean this device, make sure that you only use fresh water. I've heard of people using a light detergent. It's really up to you. Um, you just want to be careful. You don't want to remove all of the oil that's already in the device. There is a port for oil up at the top of the device, but according to the instruction manual, it does not say anything about it needing to be oiled. So I think it's good for its lifetime based on the amount of oil that was already used. So yeah, that was the Rope Runner Pro. It, in my opinion, is the best SRS device out there. Um, although it can do MRS, I just, you know, I have no really, I have no real interest in using it that way. They do say in the manual, or at least they show in the pictures, that if you're going to use it MRS to make sure that you use some kind of rigging plate, it's like a small bear paw, claw, or whatever they call it, I don't know, it's like a three, a three hole, well it's four holes really, um, it allows you to spread out, you know, so you'd have your rope coming over the crotch and then a carabiner and then a rigging plate here connecting both that carabiner and this carabiner. That way you don't have these two carabiners jammed together on one ring or whatever. So I think it is important to keep the termination end and the device separated a little. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Hit the like button if you did. Leave comments below, questions. I love answering questions. And you know, check out my channel for other educational videos, hitch how-tos, knot tutorials, and anything else under the sun. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.